Lucy Quest, episode 14. They proceeded down a narrow hallway. Forkus kept on berating them with the ominous mission they had before them for the Legion of Doom. Yes, you're all on quite a journey. It's going to be quite exciting, isn't it, Rum? With those bags with it. Rum shied away, getting his composure. Whatever. And what about you, Wojin? Was all that gold for zip lining worth it for the fact that your friends are possibly going to have to kill you as one of the main bosses of the old Legion of Doom? Maybe. I don't know. I, I just think it, you know, I love zip lining. You proceed down the hallway until it split into a fork. The right tunnel had uh, golden arches, <laughs> and the left tunnel had purple arches. We could split up, Lenny said. That's probably a really bad idea, Zombie said. Well, I know, I just think that splitting up is what most people do in some movies. She agreed. I agree. A lot of people split up, but usually some of them end up dead, Husbando agreed. Yeah, that's probably not so great. Ojin decided, well, look, I'm going through the Golden Arches. I mean, that's like, you know, McDonald's. It can't be that bad. What, like, 40 billion served? Doc agreed. Yeah, man. Served. Come on, Biscuits, let's do this. Aye, champion, let's do this. Bagini had started to sort of assimilate himself into the crowd and become one of the main principal characters. Nazoth appeared. Bzz. Hi, everybody. <laughs> you gonna go down one of those tunnels? Why not go through the purple? The purple's cool. Shut up, Henry. The drum rider said, yelling back at him. No one needs you here. Come on, Nazoth. Let's go play some checkers, shall we? They created a portal and disappeared. Going down the... Lenny had decided to arrive to the show. <laughs> Get away, Lenny. They proceeded to go down the tunnel, and... <laughs> and they stopped. They were going down the Golden Arches Tunnel. Inside the tunnel, the walls were lined with hamburgers. Oh, wow. These are all Big Macs. I don't see Big Macs. I see Quarter Pounders. I don't see quarter pounders. I see fish fillets. Everyone was seeing a different thing. Except DJ. I don't see these at all. You know, in uh, Australia, we... <laughs> we call this a royal cheese. <laughs> Isn't that from that movie? Oh, maybe. Whatever. Just keep going down here. They decided to proceed down the tunnel. And then, they had to choose. One by one, they had to work through a small opening. Ew, this is like a glory hole. So you said, <laughs> stepping through the, <laughs> through the chamber. Kara agreed. I know, it's weird. She said the first words ever. Everyone was shocked. But something happened back with the goblin. Ojin was holding her hand. I kind of like this. He stepped with her through the portal hole. In the next section, only two people could fit through. Letty and... <laughs> Letty and DJ decided to squeeze through the hole together first. Excuse me. Pardon me. They were both pushing on each other. Hey, um, that's my armor. Sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, is that a prawn? Are you happy to see me? No, not, not that at all. So they pushed through the wall. Sorry. The sun they got on the other side and the wall came crashing down behind them. Shwoom! Oh my God. They looked through the holes. It was like bars. Ojin was on the other side, shaking the bars. I will find you. I'll get you. I'm right here, Lenny said. You just gotta find a way to open this thing. Rom investigated the lock mechanism. Eh, this is not good. We're gonna have to go back to the other tunnel. You guys uh, keep proceeding. We'll catch up. DJ and uh, DJ and Letty proceeded to walk across the floor of this room as the floor began to shake and giant spikes from the ceiling presented themselves and were starting to come down. Oh, that's not good at all. Are you focused? Sorry, I get my accents mixed up. Uh, I don't think that's not good for us to have those super spiky things coming down on us. Um, do you have a plan? Aren't you a warrior of some sort? Can't you, like, shield us or something, you know? I thought you were, like, a like a shaman. Don't you have a bubble of, like, no penetration-ish type stuff? GJ opened up his spell book and went through his spells. Everything was bucket-related. Bucket of water, bucket of prawns, bucket of ice. No, I don't have anything, unfortunately. So they started to proceed to try to get to the other side of the room, and it was locked. 
door had a crazy latch system. It was like 17 different latches. Letty started working all the locks. God, I used to do this in school. Why, what, what did you do in school? Escape rooms. I was really good at escape rooms. Letty was opening up all the different locks in different ways. Suddenly, a wall erected between them. DJ on one side, Letty on the other. <clears throat> wall went up. Oh, God, this is not good. Suddenly, that wall, that room then got split in the force. They were even more divided. And the floor was starting to fill with water. Can you hear me? Letty said. Oh, I can hear you over here. Uh, the water's actually quite good for me because, you know, I, I, I have a, a lot of water on me. Well, the water's not great for me. I don't really love deep water. Well, I don't really like deep water either. It's just, uh, I, you know, I'm just used to water. And so then it started to float in water with a deep, giant spike coming down on them. This is not going good. Letty started going through a bag of trinkets. What can I do here? What can I do here? What can I do here? She started trying different trinkets, spawning different animals. The whole chamber started to fill with different animal types, different mounts. Suddenly, all her mounts were with her, starting to weave and go back and forth. Her, ze her zebra horse was all pissed off. <laughs> and all these creatures in there, freaking out. I gotta find a way out. I gotta find. I gotta concentrate. I gotta concentrate. I gotta concentrate. She decided. She realized she could switch stances. Well, what are you doing right now? I summoned a bunch of mounts. That wasn't a great idea. Well, I'm uh. I've been just paddling. It's quite nice. And this and this spike is not really... It's in the center. I can swim around the spike. I just, I'm going to run out of air, I think. But I do like water. Put a bucket over your head and you can breathe like that. Oh, that's a great idea. So he puts a bucket over his head and reserves a pocket of oxygen for him. And so he's sitting there in the chamber. Meanwhile, Lady decided to change the stance. She went into... Full defense. Protection stance. Brilliant light encircled her. She had all these new powers. And she found the spells she liked the most. Well, a lot of them. Thunderclap and shockwave. She did a thunderclap on the water. Totally vaporized in the chamber. All the animals then disappeared because they could be able to stand on the ground and weren't paddling anymore. Then she did shockwave. Dev devastating the walls in front of her. She then rolled out into the next room in an empty room waiting for DJ. Okay, uh, I got out. Um, hold on a second, she said. DJ, on the other hand, was in his chamber, and he was fine, pretty calm, with a bucket over his head, breathing whatever air he could find. On his side, the wall cracked, and a brilliant light split down the center, and the water pulled out. He came into a different room. Around him were giant squid monsters coming from both sides, and then you heard a simple woman's voice. Come with my boobs if you want to live. Excuse me? He said, looking up. I said, come with my boobs if you want to live. What is that? Is that really what you're saying? To me? I mean, I'm, I'm totally down for that. Suddenly, so standing before DJ was a beautiful princess, priestess. Her air flowed in the sky. She was just like this totally ripped chick with huge boobs. I said, come with my boobs if you want to live. Oh, fuck it. She cast a leap of faith, and he got zoomed right to him. <laughs> Twilo appeared. Twilo was Letty's sister. Another sister. Hmm. <laughs> DJ rolled his eyes. And, um, hello, you're I'm Twilo. I'm Letty's sister. I don't know. When she's in danger, I show up. It's just something I do. Anyways, come on, let's go. But I had to come with your boobs? Yes, come with my boobs if you want to live. All right, then. Together, hand in hand, Lenny, or not, uh, Lenny, Twilight guided him through a series of chambers. He was surrounded by a protective bubble, and they finally met up with Letty on the other side. Oh, well, hi, sis. Hey, sis, what's going on? What? Oh, let me guess. Every time I'm in danger, yes, I show up. Oh, great. Now I have to explain and probably share you with everybody else. By the way, that's my shaman. She grabbed DJ's hand. Oh, I never had to fight over so many boobs. I mean, people before. Sorry. Did you use that line? Come up by boobs if you want to live? Yeah, I did. What about it? That's my line. Whatever. I mean, it worked. He came with me. Um, talk you ladies. Suddenly on the other side of the chamber, the door slid open. <clears throat> Ron and the rest of the team arrived. Hi, uh, whoa, you found a, another, another girl. Who, 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 who's, uh, who, who's this? 
Punchy looked at her. She seems familiar. I feel like I've seen her before. Kara looked at her. I know, I think so too. She looked at her. <gasps> That's Twyla! She came running across the room giving Twyla a big hug. Hi, everybody. So good to see you. Twyla's a great friend of mine. Oh, I didn't... Are you related to Letty? Of course. I'm her sister. Oh. Zia rolled her eyes. That explains so much. We met Twyla a couple of weeks ago on the siege of Shakaduda. Oh, the siege of Shakaduda. We were looking for you in Cataclysm and we just, I don't know, we got distracted. We wanted to run some dungeons. So you, what, you left me in Cataclysm for a couple of weeks? You were fine. McGinney told us you were okay. I right, champion, you're fine. You're lost, but you're fine. <laughs> Together again, they moved on to the next room. Focus appeared. Oh, well, you did those rooms quite well. And you've discovered another character, I see. He looked over at Twyla. Twyla looked right through him. Ooh, this one's going to be a feisty one. Yeah, she used that line, come with my boobs if you want to live. Really? Oh. Yeah, but sometimes I wish it was a, was a player. No one ever says that to me anymore. Uh, <laughs> they, went, they proceeded to go and approach the next room. They started going through. Uh, they had basically an intricate archway system with different spells. They tried different enchants to unlock it. It was going on and on and on. Car decided to set up camp. She had all supplies. She had chili mix. She could set a fire. She bought a rack of ribs. She had everything prepped and ready. She was eating an enormously great meal. Ojin was with her. They were still holding hands. Why, they are really a couple, aren't they? So he said, I think so. Letty said, Hmm, I've seen this before. <laughs> Twyla said, Punchy said, I think it's cute. I mean, you know, for the longest time, I just feel like they've been kind of an item, so it's great that they are, like, are an item. You're so young, that Rum said, looking into the sky around him. On the ceiling was a giant mural of two angels surrounded by demons. Interesting. Scorch marks were in the ceiling. Seemed like this place was been set on fire. Putting anyone? She so said, standing up, exposing the fact that she'd been carrying a nice chest the whole time. I have pudding for everybody. Pudding? Pudding? I love pudding. I prefer pizza myself, DJ said. With an ominous loss of tone. I haven't had pizza in hours. Can we log off yet? Are really, really quite hungry? No, 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 no. Here, have a pudding. I don't really like pudding that much. Rum packed, perked up. I'll take some pudding. Punchy perked up. I'll take some pudding too. They started having pudding together. The Zoth appeared. <laughs> hey, I'll take some pudding. <laughs> yeah, I like pudding. Go away, kid. We don't like you here. The Zoth vaporized and left the scene. Rum finished his pudding. It was delicious. And started to stare at the locks on the wall. How to unlock this thing is really quite confusing. Dolph was there, singing back in a rocking chair. He carried a rocking chair with him at all times. He had one of those portable hole bags. He could pull anything out of it. He rocked back and forth. And then tried to say something really wise. You know, son. This isn't a door. This is a way. He rocked back and forth. What the hell does that mean? Why did you bring a porch with you? You can't rock in a chair back and forth unless you also bring the front of the house with the porch. Otherwise, it's not that good. But this is amazing. He was rock back and forth. Suddenly he realized, Guys, it's Doff Wednesday. Oh my God. It is Doff Wednesday. Everybody, we should have a buff. They all looked above their heads. Oh yeah, we got a buff. The buff gave him a 50% increase to solve complex puzzles. It had just turned on, as Wednesday had just occurred. Suddenly, the door, the barrier, the wall, was less confusing to them. They could read different runes. Oh man, I love this off Wednesday buff. Yeah, son, it's got the way to go. Champion, I've got a buff on my head! McGinney started running around the room with the buff on his head. Look at it! I'm buffed! I can do things! He started doing somersaults and doing cartwheels. Kara thought cartwheels were pretty cool. She could try to do them, too. She started doing cartwheels, and then the rest of the girls did, too. They had a cartwheel runway contest. <laughs> they opened up a transmographer system, changed into different outfits to do different kinds of cartwheels. The rest of the boys stood against the one wall and held up cards with numbers on them. 
I was pretty good. That's a six. That's a seven. Meanwhile, Rum stared at the wall, trying to figure it out, and then became particularly distracted by the cartwheels and skimpy outfits and sat down and decided to write, rate them as well. As the cartwheels went on, Ojin broke off from the pack and went over to the wall and looked at it. Oh, man. I mean, there's got to be a way to do this. Can't it just be like, you know, bleh. He started making faces. Meh. Started staring at the wall, making all kinds of crazy faces. Soon the wall started to match his faces and giving them the faces back. He started changing it all back and forth. Suddenly the wall got bigger and the spells and the, and the casings around it enlarged. Soon it wasn't just that wall, it was all the walls around them. Before they could realize and broke off their cartwheel dance, they realized that Ojin had pissed the wall off too much by making one too many faces. The walls completely disappeared around them, and a giant, huge lizard man appeared. <gasps> and his massive staff went <laughs> on the ground. It was massive, huge. This is the thing that was massive. This is like, it is huge. Forkus appeared. <laughs> you did exactly what I thought you would not do, and you apparently have pissed off the wall to the point where it decided to manifest into the first boss. Oh, shit. The first boss. It's huge. Massive. And, um... How are we, we going to fight this thing? I just said, stepping back. You really made faces at this thing the whole time? I was bored. You guys were doing cartwheels. He started backing up. One of you has a power, Focus said. It is unbeknownst to himself. He's an inkling of it. Discover this, and you could defeat this. But your powers combined will not. Focus then disappeared. One of us has a power. Who's got a power? I'm pretty powerful, she has said. As Mondo agreed. Yeah, I think she is. Rum was like, well, I'm kind of powerful too. I mean, are I? Lady stepped up. I'm really powerful. Twyla stand up next to her. I'm more powerful. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. No, I'm not. Yeah, I am. So you stepped in front of everybody. Clearly, this is a job for a death knight. McGinney then disagreed. Well, I don't think so. Actually, that's DJ's voice. That was DJ disagreeing. Uh, <laughs> Champions, I think we got to listen to the words of the wisdom of this riddle. This is probably not going to happen. Nazath appeared. Guys, I can join the party. Shut up, Nazath. He disappeared. <laughs> oh, I started thinking about it. You know, the thing about this riddle, guys, took a hit from his pipe. <laughs> I'm doing PvP later. Guys. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Okay, this is up, you chicken heads. Isn't that riddle? We let out a big puff of smoke. Punching one over and grabbed the hot, the bond as well. Guys. Listen to him. Oh my god. Everyone's hard to take a hit from the pipe. Yo, go on! Kara said. They all started to get exceedingly high. This was also unexpected. Focus appeared. Oh, now you've all gotten high. This is not good as well. <laughs> if you listen to it, guys, Adam said, it's in what he said. Someone has a power inside them that they don't realize. I know that's not me. Because... I know most of my powers. <coughs> Sorry to cough. So, um, who has a power that they don't realize? Hmm. GJ looked at the markings on his hands. He never knew it really truly understood the various tattoos on his body. You know, it might be me, he said. What? Everyone said, looked at him. Well, you know, they always told me that was special. You know, but they say that because they don't want to be mean to you. No, I mean, I'm merely special. You know, I've always been have some sort of power in me. Maybe there's something I can do here. You know, DJ, it's all about prawns and buckets for you. No, not. I mean, it's, I, I have some ability, you know. It's some something that can be really, truly tre tre amazing. I mean, look at this tattoo on my ass. He showed the tattoo on his ass. Looked like a dragon holding a blender with a spatula. Uh, that's really special, don't you think? So he looked at it and smiled. Can we see the crack? Sure. He just <laughs> opened up his crack to show further. They all dipped down. 
<laughs> Ojin did the head tilt all the way down as if to look inside off with him from as well. You guys are weird. You know, I really think I have power. You know, I even came with this little booklet. He pulled a booklet out of his pocket and gave it to Z. Wait, you have a booklet? Yeah, it was around my wrist. You know, when they found me. And she opened up the booklet and it said, Here is before announced to you a shaman that loves water and buckets and yeah, has a hidden power. Well, that's weird. Why do you carry this little booklet? I can't read the language in it. What does it say? <laughs> You've had this all your life and you can't read the language? Well, it just looks really good. It says you have a power. Oh, I have a power. Excellent. He stood up taller, started striding around the room. Look at me, everyone. I've got a power. I've got the power. This giant before them started to shake the room and throw spears at them. They started dodging them. Well, we got to figure out the power is, what it is. Car ran up to him and gave him a kiss on the lips. Mwah! Did that do anything? No, but I really liked that. Try again. Car then turned away. Well, it worked on Ojin. Sorry. She walked off. <laughs> Punchy went up to him, slapped him psh, across the face. Oh, did that work? No, but don't slap me again. Mm. She nodded, walked away. C went up to him and punched him in the gut. <laughs> Did that work? No, he said, falling to the floor. Hmm. Can I do it again? No, he said, trying to get his head back. I don't know what to do. Maybe you need to die, Ram said in a quiet tone. I- excuse me? Maybe your power, DJ, is you have to die. Think about it. True transformation, folks, isn't from a spell. It's from the total exhaustion of one spirit. Maybe you're supposed to die here, DJ. Well, I don't want to die. I mean, I don't think it... Is it? Is it possible? She, he, DJ looked up at the narrator somewhere in the room. Am I supposed to die right now? This really sucks. I didn't know I was being killed off. It's true that in most shows, good characters get killed off fairly early. They did in The Walking Dead. Doffed and stood out of his rocking chair. Guys, this could be the scene of his death. Yeah, this would make sense in a walking dead kind of way. Uh, <laughs> DJ started to cry a little bit. I don't want to die. I mean, even if it's my power, like, don't kill me. Oh, no, we can't actually kill you, Rum said. You have to be killed by the thing. They all started to back away from him. I think this is what you have to do. Champion, it's been great working with you. Wait, I, I, ew, I don't, I don't like this. Before DJ could say anything, the giant picked him up, grabbed him, wrapped his the giant's fingers around him, and picked him up. They all started to freak out. DJ, no! They started to battle and fight for him. Grant trying to fight this giant, making no damage at all. It had like a billion hit points. It wasn't going down. Giant held DJ high into the air and then dropped. DJ into its mouth. DJ fell inside it. No! Z freaked out, did a massive rage, and started breaking through the giant's barrier, diminishing it, started fighting really crazy on its big toe, just going all out on that big toe. Man, she's really going after that toe. She was in a total rage. Suddenly, inside the giant, a light exploded within him. Giant vaporized. The room was splattered with blood everywhere. Huge explosion rocked. GJ was gone. That's the end of this episode.